Welcome to the 311 Griffins YouTube channel. This is about the VNAO Ready Room mod. I want to talk about uh, where you get it, how to install it, how to use it, how to customize it, and then kind of give some uh, some of the issues and the positive things that I found out about it. So uh, first of all, where to get it. Uh, we will bust out of the sim here and, uh, and I'll show uh, where to get it. Um, these links will be in the comments, but there's the download link and the forum link as well. This mod is available in the user files at the digitalcombatsimulator.com website. User files. Uh, you can probably just Google search it. That's probably the fastest way to get to it. And as usual, you click the download button. However, your browser does downloads. Uh, I've already downloaded it. Now that you have it, how do you install it? Uh, once again, we're going to bust out of the sim and we're going to look at how to install that real quick. So once you have this downloaded, we're going to open up the zip file and you can, you can move these files different ways, kind of, as long as they all make it to the right spot. The first thing I want to point out is that in this uh, readme, um, this is uh, OVGME um install uh, installable mod i guess uh, i don't use ovg me i don't use i typically do not use any mod helpers or launchers or installers um i've i've in the past i found a lot of them to be more hassle than they're worth for me personally that's not to say that they will be for you um, but anyway i'm assuming that this is the correct install location for that i wish there was a manual install location as well just to clear up some some confusion, a lot of people get confused by this, and I've seen a lot of confusion about where to install this on the internet. Uh, so the proper place to put it, and and I typically either drag and drop this, or I'll just Control C copy it. But the correct place to put it is, uh, whoops, forgot that I used that one. Okay, my Windows is being silly. Um, is your Primary hard drive, users, your username, save games, DCS, open beta, mods, aircraft. Now, the reason that I think it's confusing is because some people may think that this is tech, but in fact, it's a helicopter. It is classified as a helicopter, so it goes in aircraft. So this is where you'll put it. That's all you've got to do is just get those files into this folder. Make sure that all of this stuff stays inside this and you're good to go. That is all it takes to install this mod. Now that we've installed it, how do we use it? How do we uh, implement it? Um, this will be done externally uh, in the sim. Uh, we'll do it in the sim, but outside of this presentation. Now that you have the mod installed, you need to launch DCS, obviously, to use it and you have to add it to any missions that you want it accessible in. So we're gonna load the mission editor here. We'll just use the Persian Gulf. Now you can put this on the ground or on an aircraft carrier. And I do believe that it is technically a naval ship ready room from a carrier, uh, but you, you can use it on the ground as well. We're gonna go ahead and add in Stennis just so that we have that ready. And then we're gonna choose helicopter. We're just gonna put it over here. Take off from the ground. If you have it up in the air by mistake, you may not notice, but it'll spin around. You'll only be able to see it spinning around because there are mirrors inside to kind of simulate the TVs. Um, and you might see <laughs> stuff spinning around. Uh, and then you'll eventually crash and burn. but um, so you need it on the ground, and it should be at the bottom of your helicopter list. It can be red or blue side. They used to not be. There's a list of countries in the Lua file that um, allow you to use it for different countries, but you can use it for red or blue side. Okay, uh, so we've got ready room. We've got takeoff from ground. We need to set this as client so people can join it in your skill uh, level. You can turn it to face whatever direction you want, and that does affect the TV screens, but um, I can't get them to really show anything interesting ever, so I don't really bother with it too much. And then if you want, you can select the livery. Now, um, 
This livery does not affect the slide presentation, and we will talk about that later. Uh, we will also talk about how to customize this livery, but there's a default, there's a Jolly Rogers, Argonauts, and then I added in the Griffins. Okay, so that's what all you will need to make it work. Now, if you want it on a carrier, I'm going to switch that waypoint so I can drag it out over the water. We're going to put it over the carrier, and here you would put take off from ramp, and we're going to switch it to cat 4. I think you can still take off from cat 4. I'm not positive of that, but I think you can. Uh, but it at least clears this up so that um all the the other three cats are available so let's save this as and we're going to overwrite this file that i used and then you can launch your mission now in my experience these crash far more often than they don't i hope that doesn't happen to you but um, as you can see there's our carrier in the background but since this um uh, ready room is here in the client position. It allows us to join it. We'll let it load. Okay, and we are the first person in. So we are in the number one seat, and I believe it goes two, three, four, five, six, seven, all that kind of stuff. Let me turn labels off. Okay, and you can see we've got a bunch of custom stuff on the wall, including these pillars right here. Um, if you can see that, those are little griffins. <laughs> uh, oh, one thing, if there's anybody out there that speaks Welsh, um, I would love to have the proper pronunciation for this and to make sure that it means what I think it means. So I believe it's pronounced Caifriden or something along those lines. I, I won't say what it means, but I'm hoping somebody out there speaks Welsh and can tell me like, hey, that, that does mean what you think it means. Um, okay, so I can lead the briefing. Um, and I can also switch seats. So here I'm in seat two, seat three. You can see here's the, the plat camera or the, uh, and it's just a mirror. So it's showing something outside the aircraft and it changes based on where your seat is because of the fact that it's a mirror. So, um, one thing I've noticed is these, uh, these slides change on their own sometimes as you hit different keys. And it may be, nope, never mind, it's not the head camera movement. So anyway, I can go through all of these seats, through one through zero, and then you can do left shift one, two, three, to get into the other seats. So, um, and then I think there may be, I thought I changed these. I can't find how to change these. I guess I thought that I'd figured that out, but um, whoops, I want to go back here. Nope, I want to go back here, and you can even change the nameplate on the um, on the desk there. Okay, and you're going to want to customize at least the slide deck. So I want to show you how to customize that. Again, we're going to do that outside of the sim. We'll do that using, I'll do it using GIMP uh, in Windows Explorer. You might be using Photoshop or some other photo editing software. To customize the files, you're, you go to the Ready Room folder and there's a couple of things you can do. First, the slides in the Drop Slides Here folder. The, that's the first thing you're going to be concerned with. Uh, you might also go into the liveries um, and customize the things on the wall, but we'll talk about that in a moment. Let's go back here. Now, what I do is I just copy this. So I will copy that slide deck, and I guess uh, I could because that one should be finished. I copy it, and I take it out to... Whoops. There we go. Um, I've got a folder location where... I, I keep my skins and stuff like that. So we're going to rename this one because it's a previous one. And then we are going to paste our other slides here. We're going to go ahead and rename that Ready Room. Okay. 
so these are two different slide decks that I have, and now I, I can change the slides even more, and it'll be fine. Um, so now let's go back to the ready room. Let's go into here, and essentially... All I do is I just open the, I have it set to open in GIMP, which if you need to do that, you can do uh, open with, um, find the app on your computer that you want to associate it with, uh, click it, and then check this box to o always open that type of file with whatever. Okay, so then it opens up. Uh, I want to go back here. I want to show, there's also a way you can do that in properties if you're unaware you can just change it here and same process, same process. Uh, anyway, back in GIMP, um, I will basically duplicate this layer. Uh, I will create a new layer group, rename it, whatever, and then take this slide and put it in that layer group. And then I can create new layers on top of that, blah, blah, blah. Um, Let's go back here. It winds up looking something like this, where I can kill, like this is the original that I opened up. It's down here. I duplicated that and basically started editing that with stuff over the top. This was a guide layer that I used. And then I've got words, but those aren't used because I put them on paths and stuff like that. Anyway, you do whatever you need to do to that particular slide. And then you come up here and I save it uh, in my skins folder as an XCF just so that I have it to edit later. And then I export to or export as um, now it's defaulting over to my other location, but you want to take it into your saved games mod location, DCS open alpha mods, aircraft ready room and drop slides here. And what I, it's very important that the slides remain the same name. So when you save it, you're going to save it over this slide. That's the one I opened. I'm just going to save it over that slide. Okay, um, we're going to go ahead and export this. Nothing's changed. Replace. Pop that up. It is a TGA. It has to be named the same name. Okay, and I've done that with all of these. What you see is you've got, I've got my other slides. I've got my original slide. This is the one that came with the mod. I've got one I was using for a different mission. I've got my one for this particular uh, presentation I'm doing now. And I just save it over the existing file. Uh, okay. That is the slides. Now, one important thing to notice is I only have like eight slides, I think. These others are still in there, okay? And I don't do anything with those. You could perhaps create blank slides and have them as default. I haven't gone that far yet, but it may be something worth doing to just blank all these slides, save it, and then anytime you are creating new slides, you just save over the ones you need, and then the rest are blank or something like that. In mine, if you go through the slide deck past the slides that I have, you start getting into the um, the default slides, which is fine. I don't really care, but you start seeing this kind of stuff. So uh, now let's talk about the liveries. Uh, so I don't mess with this cockpit uh, livery. I think it's used for something else, but you want the VNAO underscore ready underscore room. And I copied the Argonauts folder. You can copy any of them, really, and then renamed it Griffins. First thing you should probably do is go into this description, go down to the bottom, and change the name right here. Make sure it's in quotes to whatever you want. That way you can tell which one it is in the sim. I did not change any of these files. I'm saving over the files once again because it makes it a lot easier. And since it is its own uh, folder it's okay that we save over these things. Same deal, I saved it in my skins folder so that I could make edits later and I exported it, uh, travel down to the same folder. And sometimes it remembers stuff better than, than others, so, you know, whatever. 
it'll remember where I'm putting things. Uh, these go in the livery and then in your livery folder, and I leave the name the same, save it over it. That way I don't have to edit that Lua file. If you edit the Lua file, there's a lot of chance for making mistakes. Um, plus it's just a hassle. So again, because I don't care that they're named the same, that's the way I did it. And you just do that for all of the things that you want to change. So all of these are custom. Almost all of these are custom. I left the two American flags the same and a couple other things. Uh, the nameplate's custom, projection screen's custom, the vertical sash is the uh, pillars around the wall. So all that's custom. There's just like two or three things in there that I didn't do differently. So I think that is basically all there is to it. If you do want to change these names, make sure you find the correct place in here and change that name as well. Um, so I think you could change and I'll probably talk about this a little bit later you could change the cork board and the calendar the wall clock the desk mat which I haven't even seen there's a flagpole somewhere I wouldn't mess with the mirrors probably um, anyway oh here's the other headrests that I can't figure out how to change that's why so I, I could very easily blank these out and save some new uh, some new files just save this file again as 17 18 19 and 20 uh, and then remove these um, uh, redaction marks I can't remember what those are actually called I should know I use it in my job all the time uh, and get these things to where I could I could customize those too so it's possible uh, so uh, as far as the ready room mod goes it looks great um, I really love the way the room looks. There's some, uh, you can hear the uh, kind of background audio going on. Um, and I think, I've not used this in a multiplayer setting, but I can only imagine that it, it just adds a lot to the multiplayer setting when you get uh, 10 or so guys in here, guys or girls, talking about the mission. You know, in fact, um, you can dim the lights or turn the lights on and off. Let me zoom out a little bit. So I could really see having people come in here and sit down. Of course, you're not going to see the pilot bodies or anything, but have people come in here and occupy these quote unquote seats and just chat, make fun of each other, whatever. And then whoever's leading the presentation can flick the lights a little bit and then dim them. Everybody focuses up here, goes through the briefing and, and then goes and flies the mission. So, uh, really clever idea, really good implementation. It adds an interesting and immersive briefing and debriefing capability that I think um, would just be really outstanding. So let's talk about the issues. It's a little bit confusing to install. Uh, it's not that confusing, but I've just noticed that there is a lot of confusion, a lot of questions being asked on the internet about how to install it. Um, so I'm hoping that I have helped with that particular part here a little bit by just showing the step-by-step -step how to install it. Um, I, I really couldn't find any solid uh, guides to how to do this. Um, now, I know the Grim Reapers did a video on it, but I've not watched that video. Um, I, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't watch their videos anymore. So um, maybe it goes through it, and if so, I apologize. I don't mean to be redundant, but... Um, but I, was, I, I wasn't finding very many places that gave really solid, here's how to do it step by step. Uh, okay, a lot of people do seem to have some crashing issues like I do. I can't find any help on that. Uh, there's very little online support. I was going to go show the Discord um, because I've been struggling a little bit with finding help to just try to sort out how the crashing is going. Um, I don't think I'm going to show the Discord, but I will say that if you do join their Discord, there's a lot of different channels. Um, they are all dedicated to either random stuff or simulation, uh, other things in the sim, or the T45, which I know is probably top priority right now for them. There is a room called Ready Room, but that is not for this mod. That is a chat room for people to just chat about whatever. Um, I've seen, I asked a question in the ready room and was told this isn't the place for that. <laughs> uh, 
And I had to go ask it in a T45 forum and point out that it was the ready room, uh, that it was about the ready room mod. And then someone told me to go put it in the ready room forum. And I said, I've already tried that. They don't want to talk about it over there either. Somebody else asked a question in the ready room about the ready room, and it's never been answered. So I just want people to know that there's really not very much online support for this, for this mod. Uh, the good news is that it mostly works, I think, and that the supercarrier should have a briefing room implemented at some point. If it isn't already, I don't think it is yet, but at some point it should have a briefing room. Uh, and then if you have the supercarrier you module, you won't really need this mod. Um, so anyway, that, that's it. I do think that this is a great little mod. Um, I think it's well done. I mean, this is really, really immersive. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, you know, even pipes and the background noise and all that kind of stuff and electric boxes and, uh, clutter. There's clutter, you know, there's a calendar back there. What, what day is it? It's 2003. Okay. Um, and then I love anything that I can customize. I love, you know, give a throwback to my boy, Chris Ledoux. Um, and the, and the, uh, <laughs> you can't really see it, but that's, that's a symbol from the old testicle festival from kind of where I, where I came up out at the old tumbleweed. I watched Chris Ledoux there a couple of times. Um, so, you know, just the fact that you can have your own, your own board with your squadron on it and you can have some squadron flags and stuff like that. That's it. Enjoy. And thanks for watching.